Hello, Stephanie. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Lior? Very, very good. So we have lots of uh, interest in our real estate package and lots of people are asking how real people that actually purchased the system are handling with it, how they like it, what is uh, the, you know, the feedback and so on. So you purchased the package a year ago. And I just like to ask you some questions about it, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. So first of all, why so? Why not go with other system? No, why so? Well, I tried other systems and wanting to see how I can automate certain emails or just having that customization that I want that caters my business. There was always something that would stop me from going further. Like I would reach their support and then they'll just say, no, we don't have this feature yet. Or, yes. or one CRM would only have specific um, apps. So let's say I couldn't do my, my bookkeeping or I can't do my, uh, my signings all within this app or I can't do um, book, um, booking appointments stuff like this, this is all kind of just like you have to get, okay, you need MailChimp for your emails and you need this to manage your contacts and then you need this platform. This, it adds up to be something really expensive. And that once you have more apps communicating, there's more problems that can happen. Right, and it's also expensive. I remember when you started, you had QuickBooks for your accounting, you had different CRM for the CRM and it was like $200 a month or so. Yeah, plus I had to get MailChimp mm -hmm. and it's free at first, but if you're sending a lot of emails out, then right. you're on a paid system there too. Yep, so so the reason that you went with Zo was to reduce cost and have more automations for your system. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, it seemed to have more freedom to do the customizations I wanted and having everything synced in one place. Like the number one thing I loved about Zoho is that I can do all my signatures with my clients through Zoho Sign, which is identical to DocuSign. Um, I, I have my Zoho Books, which is very similar to QuickBooks. So I'm able to match my invoices and keep track of um, you know, real estate sales that are like could be even three years down the line, right. like a pre-construction. So it's really good that you can just see all your your contacts and see where they are in their pipelines. You can create like all the steps uh, for each of your clients where they are, and set reminders and do your emails, campaigns. Now, if if I look at, at at your knowledge a year after because obviously when you started with zo you didn't know much about the system how to create reminders oh, yeah. i knew nothing so a year later are you able to create email templates by yourself oh yeah, Auto yeah. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> automate automate them for example whenever a deal is closed to send an email to the client asking for review stuff like that yeah. yeah okay and as part of our system we also offer the leads blueprint that is uh helping you to manage the lead process are you taking advantage of it are you using it yeah okay how, how do you find it is it helping you with the lead process not to forget leads oh for sure it really gives that visual of where your leads are and how like how far along they are in the process. Okay. Yeah. Now in the in the deal process, at some point you need to send the representation agreement or uh, you no know, other other agreements. Are you taking advantage of those sign and its capabilities? Oh, religiously. <laughs> okay. Oh, and yeah. how how do you see it working? Like what are the great things and the bad things that, that you find about this tool? For Zoho Sign, I don't really find anything bad about it. I'm not trying to sugarcoat 
So well, look, we, uh, like honesty, right? That's that was the baseline yeah, of this meeting. It's really like I've used DocuSign. There's nothing wrong with DocuSign. It's just you have to pay an extra fee. True. Um, and with Zoho, since you already have your contacts with their email address and everything and where they are in the deal, you can see that being completed through Zoho Sign. So it's just it's all visually there. So I don't have to like memorize or copy paste an email to add for signing. Like it's already just populates just when I type in the name. Like it already right. All it's populates. populating the information. Yeah. So it's very it's very smooth. And when I ask my clients how the, what their experience is, and they say it's very easy, very straightforward. Doesn't yeah. let them move on unless they read or signed each populated section. It's very similar to DocuSign. There is also a cool feature in ZoSign that it's babysitting the client to sign. So yeah, you can yeah. set it up it's to reminder. send a reminder every, exactly, every one and or two days. emails everybody once it's done. That's right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It can also send a copy to the lawyer if you want. So I really like mm -hmm. like all those uh, automations in, in ZoSign. Now, what about Zo Forms? Did you have a chance to use Zo Forms to request information from clients or something like that? I did a little bit in the beginning, um, mm -hmm. but I wanted to create more branded forms. So mm -hmm. that's when I started to use the like, website landing, landing pages and yeah. Yeah, landing pages for sure will be the, the preferred way. It's just yeah. you need some money to, to invest into the landing page. Yeah, so in the beginning, when I didn't have so much money, I was using the forms there. Right. And, and I used the forms to do the customer feedback. Um, so I still use that. But for more conversion, I, I use landing pages now. Yeah, that, yeah, that's for sure the preferred way. You just, if you have the, the money for it, right? Because uh, copy and, uh, uh, and design, they are expensive uh, yeah. if you do them right. Right. You can also yeah. do them in fifty dollars and it will yeah. convert nothing. Yeah, you can pay a lot and also not convert. So you have to really know what you're doing. <laughs> right, right. Now, when you're driving traffic, let's say from your landing pages, and I know that you also have Facebook campaigns and you have different campaigns across the web, how do you push this traffic to the CRM? How do you do it? So I use an app called Zapier mm -hmm. um, that connects, so Zoho or Zapier recognizes Zoho for mm -hmm. all their apps. So from an ad from Facebook, I just tell Zapier, which connects from Facebook, whatever leads were generated from the, well, let's say they click and they click on the landing page, which is on ClickFunnels then ClickFunnels will connect to Zapier and feed all the contact information that I'm requesting from the landing page. And it mm -hmm. will populate automatically on Zoho. And what's really great about it, and believe me, I found other CRMs not do this, which seems very basic, um, knowing the lead source and the lead type. Some Yeah, that's critical. Yeah. yeah, some apps, even though it has it in their system, Z Zapier won't populate it for whatever reason, um, just because of whatever software updates they haven't, like the, the CRM hasn't done with Zapier. And then you have to manually do it yourself. Like I left one of the, yeah. one of a really big CRMs just because of that. So I'm like, well, how can I have a Google ad and then have a Facebook ad and- right. A buyer and a seller and not know is it a right. buyer or seller and i don't know where this conversion came from it like kills that. the idea of the conversation you start to inquire okay what do you want when you're already supposed to know what he wants yeah like it to do that manually i might as well then stop the ad you know <laughs> like or do them one by one which is not that's not practical uh, for sure so the lead is coming basically from your advertisement. The person goes to ClickFunnel or the website and from there is being pushed to the CRM. Yeah. 
Now, when he's on the CRM, you're trying to connect with, with this person, try to convert him. And then if he is converted, he goes to the opportunities section where you manage the opportunity. Exactly. How, how heavy are you using the opportunities section? Some real estate agents will have 50 steps, 50 stages on the opportunity. Some will have only three or four. Where are you in this cycle? How many stages you have in the opportunity? I have five stages. I try to keep it a little bit more simple. It's easier for me to read and understand where it is. Because yep. if, if I have like a million steps and it probably won't be realistic that I will go and constantly um, adjust where they are. Right. Um, so like I have like the, you know, like a preliminary stage and then um, in, and then it, whether they've been contacted and if they've been contacted, did we schedule appointments? Are we submitting an offer, offer accepted or not? And, and we'll just kind of move it back and forth wherever we are. Got it. So you're, you're using the opportunities section just to know where you are, you are at the stages, but you are not really using any automations based on the stage. For example, sending agreements or sending notifications or checklist, for example, of I'm not I'm not there yet, to be honest. I haven't I want to, like especially for like a checklist. Um, I would like to automate something there. Mm -hmm. Um, but really the only the only part that I have automated in the opportunities is once the once the deal has completed and we close mm -hmm. it, once I click close, then it sends the, the client review. I see. So it will send the review. If, if he's saying it's all good, I was happy with the service, then you send in a public review. And if not, yeah. you try to see what was wrong to learn from it and yeah. fix the relationship. Yeah. And I usually give them a care call to see how they're doing and, and all that stuff too. Like there's still some things that you, you know, you can't automate everything. Like you, you want to keep those relationships with your clients. So. For sure, for sure. There is always a, a sweet fine line between fully automated or what you do manually. And for sometimes sure. you go too much with the automations and clients feel it and yeah. you don't appreciate it. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So the bottom line, how, how do you like Zo after a year? Would you still go this route a year later or maybe you would try a different system um to be honest you know after joining, honesty is good to after joining another brokerage they had a really cool crm yep. and so i didn't leave zoho yet because i was like okay like i love zoho i don't want to just cut the cord and i'm like let me just see what's on the other side here. And it was also free for me to, to So now you're working with two CRMs in parallel, one, the new brokerage and one that is Zoho. Yeah, I was doing it very temporary. Like it was like for like two weeks, I was, you know, bringing everything over and just seeing how it would be. And that's when I started to hit a lot of problems with the way I would do my lead gen with my advertising. With, with the new brokerage? with the new brokerage. Yeah. Um, then, then that's when I was like, okay, I'm just going to welcome myself back home to Zoho <laughs> and, and stick with it. Cause it really does allow you to do endless things and really helps you grow your business. Good. Okay. So Stephanie, thank you very, very much for spending some time with me today. I know that you're a very, very busy agent. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you very oh, much for the honesty no and the way that you, you helped me today. Thank you very much. No problem. Anytime.